specific items, an object care. Um, that's, that's these days is a lot of foundations. Um, also potentially uh, Historic New England has a small grant program. They give basically each New England state a thousand bucks, a one grant, a thousand dollar grant each year um, that could potentially do something that's preservation related for some of the materials that you have. Um, great, and thanks Patricia again from the Bixby. Uh, I will say it many times, they have done a lot of work um, over a number of years uh, with their collections and, and working towards uh, what I think is is sort of the real standard of moving it from something that is may have been a burden um, and now I think is, is going to be some place where it's really something that, that um, what they have will be working for them rather than against them. Ooh, interpret accessibility, excellent. Did I miss? Uh, so yeah, Jen says uh, she's in the process of cataloging writing policy for antique book local history items and lithic artifacts. Awesome. Um, and I will say uh, also on this uh, workshop, a uh, Rachel Onif from the Vermont uh, Circle Records Board program, whatever I felt like saying, um, is here. So I'm going to give a shout out if you have specific archival uh, questions or collections that you need help with. She's a fantastic resource um, out of the state archives uh, and, and certainly another one to, to get to. Um, lithic. <laughs> uh, lithic is stone. So that means if you have any stone materials, uh, again, for some organizations that might be things like arrowheads or Native American materials most often, but could also be natural history collections related to stone. Um, so I think actually the Bixby at various times had all of those. Ooh, arrowheads, yeah, yep. Thank you, Rachel. This is Joy again, so I just want to say that hopefully this is just one of many collaborations we will do with VHS and uh, we've done some things with archives in the past as well. Um, both of these women have helped do grant um, workshops in the past for the Department of Libraries, which has been a great help. Um, there's a huge uptick in Vermont libraries applying to grants, and I think there might be a relationship between some of those workshops and that. Um, so um, one thing that will be helpful, I think, on the Department of Libraries ends, if you can stay in touch with us and let us know what your needs are, because we do get a lot of questions about this kind of thing, and then we um, tend to pass them along to um, VHS or archives. Um, but if we get a lot of the same kinds of questions, then um, they have been generous about helping us with workshops like this. So keep the questions coming, and even if we aren't the best person to answer the question, it is helpful for us to receive them and sort of um, track them so we know what the needs are in the library world for the workshops. Yeah, and I will definitely, you know, reiterate um, again, we as VHS do a variety of workshops and training programs uh, related to uh, all sorts of museum stuff. But again, there might be some things that are applicable to you, depending on the types of collections that you have. Uh, right now, I've got some virtual roundtables going on, um, but I think we're going to be possibly doing a textile workshop in the summer, spring, summer. So if you have textile collections for any reason, that might be one that you'd be interested in. Um, but you can, and again, another plug, um, you can go to our newsletter. We do have a bi-weekly uh, e-newsletter um, related to uh, local historical societies and museums, which has a lot of great resources and information on our programs. Um, and so if, again, if it's something where you, you have this stuff and you really want to sort of keep in the know about some of the resources or the events going on related to it, you can sign up for our e-newsletter. Um, we're also establishing an ongoing list serve. Um, it's in its sort of infancy, um, but that's another way if you're you're interested in. And as Joy said, again, feel free to contact me. Uh, these days, email is definitely the easiest. Um, but again, we might not have all the answers, but hopefully we can point you in the direction of some resources or some people uh, that we know of that might be able to uh, to help you out. There's a lot of good information out there 
Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's always hard sometimes, I think, when you don't necessarily know the, the world, sort of which resources um, you, should, you should look to. So, awesome. Thank you, Joy, collecting the links. Fantastic. All right. Any other questions? Any specific conundrums? I'm happy, you know, we got a few minutes. Uh, if anybody has any specific uh, things that, that's vexing to them or that they still have a question on that I didn't quite answer, I'm happy to, happy to hang with folks. Or anything that you've done generally related to collections um, in your space you want to promote, I'm happy to hear about those examples as well. Yeah, Catherine pointing out volunteers. Yes, essential to the, and especially again, if you're thinking about bigger projects, uh, we at VHS use volunteers a lot um, for, you know, we have some ongoing collections of volunteers that come in. Um, and then obviously if we're gonna do a bigger project, uh, they're, they're fantastic. Um, and again, especially if you're interested in uh, looking towards, um, you know, working on a bigger project and you want some help talking about uh, how you can use volunteers or train volunteers, let me know. Um, oh, contacts for taxidermy concerns in ammunition. So uh, taxidermy is, is difficult. We don't actually have a lot of object conservators around Vermont right now. Um, and so there's certainly some online resources and some online information about sort of care and cleaning, um, but I'd have to look up to see who else um, we would go with uh, for um, people to work on taxidermy right now. Uh, ammunition wise, if you think you have munitions or you have, you know you have munitions and you're not sure of their status, uh, I would start with the Vermont State Police, generally speaking. Um, and, and sort of see uh, if they have anybody specifically that would be able to come in for you or if they have uh, some information on specific folks that might be coming to evaluate your materials. Yeah. Oh, Amy's husband is the commander of the bomb squad. Fantastic. So that's a great resource. Um, but yeah, they can, again, hopefully speaking, everything is good, but but we want to make sure. Okay. I think another thing, um, sort of following up on taxidermy, because again, I know that's one that a lot of people have, again, also as something where you might think of it as a collection or again, just hanging on your wall, um, that I think it's something to to really look towards sort of figuring out um, how much of an issue it is for you. The one thing about the, the aspect related to especially the arsenic and other chemicals is generally speaking, if you're not touching them, uh, they're not a hazard. So it's not necessarily something that you have to think about um, sort of in the air. Um, and so they, they can technically kind of sit there a little while, but that you just want to make sure they're not publicly accessible per se. Um, and then you can get testing materials and kits to be able to test your taxidermy for uh, arsenic, especially if you, and especially if you have a, a large collection. Um, but generally speaking, if you have taxidermy at least 100 years old, maybe 75 years old, chances are good. It's got arsenic or something gross on it. Ooh, arts and, anybody used arts and culture to promote their collections? Good question. We have not, is a uh, answer for that. Anybody else? All right. 
And there's a question about experts for creating storage units and securing storage rooms. Um, looking specifically for people to do that, create, you know, basically build storage units for you. Uh, again, there's not too many people around here specifically, but there's some great online resources on storage. Um, and I get that down, Catherine, to try and get in touch with you and send you some of those specific links. Um, but there are a couple of definite uh, sort of, of ways in which you can you can get at least sort of basic ideas for build and then work with a local contractor if you need to. Um, securing uh, storage rooms. Uh, again, I think that that's sort of, again, another big question. Um, and I, again, I'm trying to think if there's anybody specifically working in sort of security in this area. Uh, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Um, but there's certainly, again, some good online resources. I'm going to write that down. And again, one thing to say about sort of security um, is also the question or the, the idea of layering what you do. Uh, so again, that you can have locked rooms, you can have locked cases, you can have uh, sort of things that are locked um, down within a case. And so again, looking at some of the ways in which you can layer uh, to create security. Um, obviously these days there's cameras and other passive security uh, measures that you can also employ uh, as well. So back yet, Jody asked about vacuuming taxidermy with a HEPA filter, right? Yes, so uh, anything um, that has potentially harmful chemicals on it. So again, taxidermy is a big one that you probably have, but there might be other stuff. Uh, anytime you vacuum uh, clean collections, you want to have a HEPA filter. And I would very much also recommend being masked up um, and doing it in a well-ventilated or outside area if you can. Uh, so you don't want to do this in a closed space, sucking in all of whatever comes out of that. Okay, oh, pest control policy. So let me see if I can pull up a good link specific for that. Um, there are a couple of great spots to go to. Um, this one is uh, Museum Pests, um, which is the IPM Working Group. Uh, and they've got a lot of great resources. So uh, they can be, help you. Um, if anybody is not uh, familiar with IPM or integrated pest management, this is something that extends beyond museums. So if you are, um, you may be working in a, in a business that has an IPM policy, a lot of, of actually sort of uh, farms or other food service uh, businesses have IPM policies um, because of pests are a very big problem uh, alongside us. So that is definitely something um, that Again, and the idea is, is working towards a solution that takes into account, um, again, the types of pests you might have, the types of materials that they may be attracted to for various reasons, and how you can work to control uh, pests in a responsible manner uh, so that we're not all both either harming ourselves by using certain pest control measures or being ineffective with the pests that are coming uh, for our stuff. Uh, safeguarding a room from all the agents of deterioration. Mm. Uh, that's another big question. Uh, again, I think I'm going to sort of start to point you towards the resource list to start with. Um, and there's again a couple of the connecting uh, to collections website. I really love that's a, a project that was started by IMLS a few years ago, but they are constantly having webinars and all of their recorded webinars are on there. They also have a lot of great resource links. Um, so if you have a specific question, so if you want to start with lighting, like just type lighting into that website um, and, and start from, from there. Um, but again, I think, you know, a lot of this stuff, of the reasons that we can talk about some of these general guidelines, um, but what I call the ideal versus real aspect of working with these collections, especially from a preservation standpoint, uh, is that we have to say, okay, I know I can't have any light. But this is also stuff that's in a room where I have to have people be able to read book titles. So how do I 
work towards thinking about the fact that I have an object that's supposed to be completely in the dark all the time, but I have it in a room where I need to actually have light on stuff. And, and I think this is, again, a ways in which we're approaching, especially from preservation standpoint um, in museums, and I think more these days um, than we used to in some aspects, but, but how we can actually make things work. Um, and again, prioritize value, prioritize risks, um, and working towards that to figure out what actually works for you. Thank you, Rachel, for sharing the, the link right there. Any other questions? I've had fun. I appreciate y'all um, coming and uh, listening to me jabber. Uh, and, and again, I appreciate folks who have uh, who fill up the evaluation. And definitely, again, if there's anything um, that I didn't cover that you think would be great too, or anything that was confusing or anything like that, I'm I'm happy to hear. Um, so that hopefully, if we get to do this again in the future, um, even better idea about what's what's uh, going on. Well, thank you again, Eileen. This has been terrific. And thank you everyone for attending and for contributing in the chat as you did. As I said, I will collect these and share them with people um, via an, an email to the registration list. So um, there's a lot of great content on here. And again, do keep the questions coming and we will search for the answers yep. if we don't know them. So thank you all. Yeah, and I think, um, well, I do think somebody had asked about the the slides. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll, Joy, I'll get you a copy, just like a PDF of the actual slides, just so people have that as well as the handout and the recording, so that you don't have to you don't have to watch the recording again to remember what I said on a specific question. And Jody's the intersection of libraries, archives, and museums. I love them too. Um, in a case you can't tell, I absolutely adore uh, museums and historical societies and libraries that are these these quirky sort of of a little bit of relic, a little bit of modern, uh, all jumbled together. And I think that, that again, the great thing about, uh, especially in the public library world, is the way in which we intersect with our missions as community organizations. And again, I think that's a great thing to see uh, moving forward, so. Yeah, I really appreciated the exercise you did with the pictures and the ideas for programming around them, because that's, that's really um, reaching out to the public with things yeah. that, you know, in, an, in a unique way that there were some great ideas around that. So thanks for all those yeah. ideas in the chat as well. And I know, and, and again, it's sort of, it's always fun when things um, sort of come together as a whole, you know, how we've all used the Bernie meme. Everybody in the world literally has, I just saw something for a rowing organization in Scotland I follow that used the Bernie meme and that he's everywhere literally. But then I think I also love, again, the ability to use our community resources. So you know, when you're thinking about the art that you have on the walls, like if you're doing an art program with kids, you know, like you don't have to use Picasso if you have something on your own wall that you could use. And that's a great connection, um, I think, for the people in your community to really think about what you've got and, and value it as well as you do. Anything else? Mm. Oh, integrated catalog records. Oh, Jody, dreams, 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 dreams. Would be fantastic. Link to open data. Yes, Rachel. Dreams. Get there.